Hello everyone! Welcome to Stilt Video Series. U.S. citizens over 21 years old can file a petition for permanent residence on behalf of the non-U.S. citizen parents, and it starts with filling out an I-130 form. The I-130 is a fairly long and complex form to fill out, and people often get confused or stuck at certain points. I-130 Checklist for Parents You need more than just the Form I-130 itself to submit a petition to the United States Custom and Immigration Service, or USCIS. There are a number of supporting documents that must be submitted, along with a fee. Use this I-130 checklist for parents to make sure that your petition is submitted correctly and gets accepted. Pre-I-130 Checklist There are two checklists of information for the I-130 when bringing parents to the United States. One checklist will be for the petitioners, and the second checklist will be for the parents. Petitioner's Information Address History for the Past 5 Years employment history for the past five years, previously filed petition for the beneficiary or any other foreign nationals. Beneficiaries information, address history for the past five years, employment history for the past five years, I-94 information if presently in the U.S., any previous immigration proceedings. I-130 checklist. At a glance, you will need the following to complete form I-130. USCIS Filing Fee Cover Letter, Optional Form I-130 Petition for Alien Relative Proof of Status Beneficiaries Foreign Passport Photo The explanations for each item are given below. Submission Fee The application processing fee for the I-130 form is $535. This fee must be paid either by check, money order, or international bank draft. Personal checks, traveler's checks, and debit cards are not accepted. However, petitioners can pay the fee in cash if they submit the petition in person at a U.S. consulate. Cover Letter USCIS does not require a cover letter, but a cover letter can help itemize the documents you are submitting and clarify any extraordinary circumstances that you may have. Form I-130 Petition for Alien Relative your submission must include a copy of the I-130 form with each field filled out to the best of you and your parents' ability. Be careful to print legibly and double-check your answers for accuracy before submitting it. Proof of Status Petitioners must submit proof that they are in the U.S. legally. You may submit a photocopy of a birth certificate if you are U.S. born, passport, naturalization certificate, certificate of citizenship, or consular report of birth abroad. If you are a lawful permanent resident, submit a photocopy of both sides of your green card or other proof of permanent residence. Beneficiary's Foreign Passport Photo Provide a photocopy of the beneficiary's valid foreign passport photo page. Form I-130's Supporting Documents Checklist You will need to submit a photocopy of the following documents with Form I-130. Translations for any documents not in English, completed by a certified translator. Proof of U.S. citizenship via passport, state-issued birth certificate, or naturalization certificate. Birth certificate of parents. Foreign passport of parents. Marriage certificate of your parents. Depending on the circumstances of the petition, you may also have to include divorce decree or death certificate if one of your parents passed away or one has remarried. Record of name change if either you or your parents have ever had a different legal name. Form I-407, Abandonment of Lawful Permanent Residency, if your parent has ever been a U.S. permanent resident in the past. How to complete the I-130 form for parents. There are five different parts of the I-130 form. Here's how to complete each part. Part 1, Relationship Information. Check the parent box and answer the relevant questions. The purpose of these questions is to determine not only that these are your parents, but that they are your biological parents. U.S. citizens cannot file for permanent resident status on behalf of adoptive parents. Part 2. Personal Information In this part of the I-130, you'll provide a wide range of personal information proving your U.S. citizen status, address, marital status, work history, and more. 
This part is meant to demonstrate that you are who you say you are and that your parents are eligible for a green card. Part 3. Additional Personal Information This part is a continuation of the last and involves you providing biographical information about yourself. Part 4. Parents' Personal Information Part 4 of the I-130 form asks many of the same questions as Part 2 and 3, but now about your parents. Your parents will have to provide answers to questions about marital status, employment, and more. The supporting documents that your parents submit to the USCIS will provide supporting evidence for the information they divulge in this part. Part 5. Additional Information About the Petitioner The questions in Part 5 pertain to whether or not you have ever in the past filed a petition with the USCIS on behalf of an immigrant. Finally, you sign the document and confirm the date, and your I-130 form is completed. Where to file an I-130 petition? First, go through the I-130 checklist for parents above and make sure your petition has all the proper documents. Then, make a photocopy of the whole petition for your records. Once you know the petition is ready, mail it to a USCIS lockbox. Which USCIS lockbox you send your I-130 petition to will depend on your location. A couple of weeks after submitting your I-130 petition to the USCIS, you should receive a notification of receipt, which indicates the USCIS has received your petition. However, this is not approval. You will get a receipt number, which you can use on the USCIS website to track the progress of your petition. Once processing is completed, you will receive an approval or denial notice. We hope this video has been helpful to you. At Stilt, we provide financial services for immigrants and the underserved. Subscribe to our channel and visit stilt.com for more details.